Warner Brothers and New Line neatly get their logos out of the way in 23 tidy seconds. Only we're not done with the logo train, because R has yet to check in. After everything we've seen. Disembodied movie talking. Want to make the events of your movie seem like they're based on a true story? Dig up the Warren's connection to the Amityville Horror, a story that has been questioned about its authenticity for decades. Discount Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Okay, we ready? Then let's get started. Character in a movie at 139 mark says what I said at the 000 mark. Envision yourself in a halo of glowing white light. It will protect you. <laughs> Jump cut scare. What did you do? I mean, try not laughing during this awful sh**. It's impossible. Movie proves Vera Farmiga has a way better imaginary dream shotgun than you do. By the way, this movie emulates the first Amityville horror in that the people sleeping during all the shooting are the deepest, sleepingest motherfuckers in the world. If you slow this down, you can literally spot a dozen different ways this mirror shot is off. What an asshole. <laughs> Creepy ghost kid laughing creepily in a horror movie cliche. Also, what an asshole. Jesus Christ, this is a vision, right? She can't even keep up with the creeper kid and a vision? How's she gonna possibly hold her own when this sh goes real life? Oh sh**, not Oculus again. Ah, Kim Basinger. I'm kind of confused. If Lorraine gets strangled here, does she die in the Matrix? Also, somehow, even though I thought she was walking through a previous murder from the past, this chick is still strangled by a white-faced zombie nun ghost born out of a mirror. And when you put it all in writing, yes, it does seem pretty goddamn ridiculous. Who stacks chairs like this? What kind of Jenga bullshit is going on with this furniture? The people around the table should not be buying this, but that halo of glowing light is probably preventing them from being skeptical. This is as close to hell as I ever want to get. The end. The end reading. Jesus f***ing Christ movie, we get it. We're in London. The song alone was overkill, but the British invasion seizure was dead horse beating levels of unnecessary, you right foul git. He's just a wanker. Ignore him. Look, if this movie is going to speak another language without giving me any subtitles, I might as well give up. You can't just go into another country like this and expect me to follow along with my rudimentary understanding of whatever language this is. Hey, she's there, I, I feel like maybe this movie isn't British enough. This is a nifty little shot here, where we pan up with mom into the hall window and through it into the bedroom, then follow the daughter back out into the hall. My only issue is that nothing in the story or script of this movie comes close to matching the creativity displayed here in this shot. This shot is above this movie. Actually, for being such a well-shot movie overall, we'll remove it. Look, it's bad enough we're conjuring the Amityville horror. Do we need to conjuring too a discount Ouija board into this thing? Look, if this movie's gonna go all insidious on me, why not just call this Insidious 4? You already got Patrick Wilson, so I'm already having a hard time distinguishing this movie from those movies. This kind of pounding would definitely make me jump out of bed and fear for my life. But this girl don't give a f If a movie opens with excessive evidence the family is poor, you can bank on even more evidence piling up as you go forward. Also, sweet, spontaneous wet t-shirt contest. We're back with real life ghost hunters, Ed and Lorraine Warren. <laughs> Sorry, I'm genetically hardwired by logic to laugh out loud whenever I hear the phrase ghost hunter, regardless of context. And now we're gonna talk to my next guest, Dr. Stephen Kaplan, who says that the investigations the Warrens conducted into the Amityville haunting is a load of hogwash. Then why isn't he the hero of the story? Careful who you call a liar. What are you gonna do about it? Fraud fight. First night, bang some doors. Second night, move a single swing. It's gonna be 17 or 18 nights before these ghosts do any real damage, isn't it? What are you doing here? Playing a game with Billy. You're both here talking to her and playing a game with Billy? Fucking Ouija board demons, man. How do they work? STAY AWAY FROM BILLY! How the f*** did she get over there that fast without making any noise? Ah! Hutch! This goes on for some time. Like most ghosts from the fiery depths of hell, this guy likes to play with children's toys. Okay, the kid turned it off and kicked it into the tent. Now it's in his bedroom and turned back on. I might be weirded out too, but remember, this is the 70s. In the 80s, I had electronic toys doing weird f***ing shit all the time. America didn't really master the glitch-free, battery-powered toy until Teddy Ruxpin, so this kid should at least be considering the totally plausible explanation of toy malfunction. Does this movie know how Sixth Sense it is right now? I don't think it does, because if it did, someone would have said something, and this scene wouldn't be so Sixth Sense right now. Ah! Audio-based jump scare, f*** you, movie. Check your DBs on that because I'm thinking about suing your ass, f that was loud. Also, okay, fine, that was scary. Unexpected and loud, and I felt like I was gonna die. But the f*** is up with this dude? If you want them out of the house, show up and scare Francis O'Connor. No one believes kids unless they're in the crucible. Ghost who really, really wants these people out of his house decides to retire when the adult shows up. Super poor family has giant house with a television that has a goddamn remote control in 1977. It's like Dad spent all the money just hours before he skipped out on this family. That's the only reason I can think of that they're so poor. Because earlier, Mom said she had no money for biscuits. And even though she has twice since produced magic biscuits, she still hasn't sold this f***ing luxury TV and forced her kids to seek entertainment in their own imaginations. Every single exterior establishing shot of this house opens with a car zooming by. Everyone! 
Not to mention the fact that we already were just inside the house. Let's see, we've got Queen Elizabeth and we have a stuttering British kid. So this movie is basically the king's speech when it comes down to it. Direct TV. Just read a f***ing book, dude. How much were you really enjoying that Margaret Thatcher speech anyway? Be honest. MY HOUSE! Okay, but why spend so many days pounding on doors and rolling fire trucks around if you have this serious a point to make? Also, why does he give up after that? Why not appear behind her five, six, seven more times until she leaves? Ah, Mona Lisa on meth! Yeah, I know I'm no Picasso, but didn't think it was that bad. This guy knows his wife like I know his wife. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Anyway, he should know that her disturbance has nothing to do with his shit painting. But what's in the shit painting? We could still do the lectures, but no new cases. And by that, I mean we will take a new case 10 minutes from now. Also, you're not going to tell your husband that the nun he painted is the exact same nun that strangled you at the Lutz house? But why? Because if it's the TV shows and the... Ah, another scary ghost! Kill it! <laughs> and holy shit, they talk to it! In case I go sleepwalking again. Okay, first of all, what if you sleep untie this middle school knot? Second of all, why are you acting like you didn't literally see a remote control moving old man ghost earlier today? Did you tell anyone about that? Do you think he's impervious to knots? Once again, a super loud pounding on this door not only doesn't wake the entire house, it doesn't even wake the sleeping sister in this room! Janet knows this house is haunted, but decides to walk through it in the dark anyway. <laughs> there have been a couple decent scares in this movie, but now it resorts to the pulling the covers off and yelling technique. Have you two been playing with this? God damn it! Are you going to forget the bite on your daughter's shoulder? And I'll ask again, the fuck is this ghost scaring the kids and not the adult for? Is it bad that I didn't realize there were two brothers until just now? Can you imagine what a good scare that would have been if there wasn't two brothers? Instead, movie's been so negligent with, I think, the taller one, I had no idea. Until I rewound this movie and found this kid a couple other times playing insignificant background filler. Finally! Bring me a chair from the kitchen. Wouldn't it be great if he went to get the chair and when he came back his partner was murdered? Ah, maybe I should make horror movies. Then what? Mice, maybe? This f***ing idiot hears thunder rumbling in the house and then suggests mice. F***ing fire this dipshit on the spot, other cop. This dickhead finally figured out if you need people to leave your house, you do in front of the authorities. Exterior shots suggest we're back in America for now, but the lack of rapid montage involving U.S. monuments over Jimi Hendrix's instrumental national anthem, I can't be sure. Lorraine is transfixed by her daughter, who is obviously transfixed towards something down the hall. But this is a horror movie, and Lorraine won't notice the demon nun until after her daughter points it out. After God knows how many years being thwarted by them, the ghosts have finally decided to haunt at the source of their enemies. You ruined our haunting! Now you must pay the price of slammed doors and thuds in the night! Yeah, we all know where this is going, right? This ghost understands symmetry. Oh, Lorraine's been in the further this whole time. I got a question, though. How did her daughter show up in her vision? You're telling me her vision has no rules? Eh, okay. I don't like that. What do you want? So what's stopping you? Also, why even tell her? These visions raise more questions than answers. TV crew captures haunting on film, but I guess the late 70s viewing audience collectively cried Photoshop or something. <laughs> Mom looks concerned about her daughter's health, but carry on. TV interview. Why is the sister still looking at her obviously possessed younger sibling like she's telling a story about Girl Scouts? Why is an older sister freaking the F out? I'm sure the haunting is plenty hot news in this community, but no bread? That should get the entire front page by itself and certainly top of the fold placement over some soccer controversy. It won't help, really, but isn't it about time they took this tent down? It's kind of a catalyst for a whole bunch of bullshit, isn't it? This isn't creepy anymore. You did this shit like in the first 20 minutes and you've moved on to possessing small children. Why go back to random toy fuckery? Is it just to pad the runtime? If this dude shows up as a guy carrying an umbrella all of a sudden, I'm officially done with this movie. If you can do this as a ghost, you can literally do anything and should have won already. Based on the true story. Also, yeah, I mean, now we're talking about transforming yourself into whatever drawing is on a child's tour. And this isn't your house. What kind of a dick ghost haunts the neighbor's house? Soul spiraled into a crooked hell! Phew, it was Janet all along. Wait, what? This dude could clearly kill everyone here and not even think about it, but he fails miserably, and he basically just causes damage and clean up headaches. Then there is a family in London that desperately needs our help. Can you believe this movie is at the hour mark and the Warrens aren't in London yet? This thing is over two hours. I had a premonition of your death. Involving stalagmites. Come on, we don't run from fights. This works. I understand that Janet is levitated. Did that happen in here as well? Yeah, more yeah. than once. When did that happen? Did we miss the levitation? Or are we talking about the time when she fell out of bed? The power of 50 crisis compels you! My ex-husband bought all the furniture with the house when we moved in. This family, unlike most horror families, has actually lived in this house for a while now. Why did it take so long for this ghost to get pissed off? It said it wants to hurt you. And, oh, believe me, it can hurt you. But it's not going to right now or anything. He also told me he can stop smoking anytime he wants. He just doesn't want to. Demon makes them all turn their backs because he's suddenly shy? There's no good reason except to have a unique perspective on this demon interview scene. Brother, let's get down to business. What do you say? You're telling me no one has snuck a peek yet? You see this? <laughs> 50 crosses upstairs don't deter this dude, but this one tiny cross does. 
Are you sensing a presence? No, it's just the opposite. I'm not sensing anything. What? How can that be? We could be looking at hysterical neurosis. That would explain the multiple personalities and... <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Oh, love, I wish you wouldn't do that. It helps me sleep. At least I know I'm not going anywhere. That's not what we saw earlier. You fell out of bed, remember? Oh, love, I'm sorry I didn't believe you. Say what you will, these hauntings appear to be good for mother-daughter relationships. Oh, she's being haunted by St. Peter. This asshole needed a distraction in order to scare the audience. I mean, Janet. Janet! These two must sleep like the dead. How much noise did they just sleep through here? Like three minutes of solid petrified screaming. So wait, this dude's plan was to suffocate her with curtains? Goddamn, man, you just pulled her through the ceiling into this room. You transformed yourself into an illustration. The f can't you just kill something using your own powers? There was someone in here! I saw it with my own eyes. They're gonna believe her, right? Since this f***ing room was padlocked from the outside and this girl was found screaming and suffocating inside? The only other explanation is that the mom did all this without the warrants down the hall hearing anything. And what about the claims that Janet has been teleporting around the house in her sleep? You mean like last night when you found her in the locked room? What the actual Jesus? But she teleported herself into a room locked from the outside. Easy discount, Jean Shallot. I've already covered this, but good job copying me. She could have spit it out. Taken another sip before you turn back. Ah, so the demon wants the humans to doubt his existence. What a weird-ass ghost, man. He's literally just f***ing with them. So you really do believe them? Yes, we do. Lorraine made Ed promise before they came here that they'd leave at the first sign of this haunting being real. Yet here they are, 12 hours in, at least good five pieces of true haunting evidence, yet neither has even brought up the We Should Leave Pact. Wise <laughs> men <laughs> say... No one will be seated during the Patrick Wilson Elvis karaoke scene. Shall I stay? The fact that this random, leaning against the wall, generally unused guitar is in perfect tune? That's like a sin and a half to anyone that ever played a guitar in real life. Though, for scorekeeping reasons, we'll round it up to two. It's so small and light. Har har. Did you ever worry that there might be something hiding under your bed at night? Yep, he's actually fixing their plumbing while staying there as a ghost hunter, because Hollywood only knows one gear when it comes to super good characters, and that's all the way, baby! Look, I'm fine with the Warrens integrating themselves into this family, trying to get them to think happy thoughts and all that, but this movie wastes so much time. What's that? This basement was absolutely constructed with the specific goal of adding to the tension of a horror film. I mean, who builds that many half walls with that many open board slots? Yeah, it's scary. I just don't know why this motherfucker has to creep anywhere. He could just transport himself over to Ed and grab him right now if he wanted. Haha, -ha, I was gonna kill Ed, but now I've decided to kill you instead. Haha, -ha, I'm so great. She clearly got bit in this water, but he's casually feeling around like there's a definite nearby plug drain or a million dollar heart of the sea diamond down there. He's back from the grave because his business has unfinished teeth. Even though this chair is definitely evil and connected to the ghost, these assholes still put all the Christmas tree decorations on it, causing Janet PTSD every trip back for a new ornament. Ah, oh, it's the brother. Whew. She just teleported into the next jump scare. The producers of this movie really hate chairs. Locked doors are no match for Ed's average human man strength. I think there's something wrong with your wiring. The <laughs> movie doesn't even try to show you how he untangled her from all that mess. This video is offered as proof of Janet faking it, but if she's being possessed, as they've seen happen, doesn't this video basically prove nothing? Also, does anyone remember that a whole chair got thrown on a line from the kitchen to the living room? And is this footage from five minutes ago? Because so much more happened during that scene. Plus her brother was there, and there was no footage of how she got into that impossible closet either. Or the part where she magically appeared in that room. Or the bite marks which everyone conveniently forgets. Movie offers a shitty old-timey cover of the Wallflower song from Zoolander. Is this movie seriously about to turn on him seeing a spilled tape in the shape of a cross? Really? X marks the spot? Oh, please, it won't let me go! Come on, I can see that this is clever, but why would he leave out specific words two different times that, when combined, magically form one message? What kind of convenient ghost affliction causes this sh Oh, now you feel the presence. The f You mean this whole thing was a ruse to get the Warrens out here so that this demon nun could kill Ed? Jeez, ever considered working in America? She survives this. Thunder and lightning storm during the climax. Get out of here. Her sight was being blocked by the inhuman spirit. It's just unfortunate that her sight, which detects inhuman spirits, was blocked by an inhuman spirit. That's it. And knowing the demon's name gives us power over it and we can cast it out. Yeah. <laughs> really? Okay. Whatever. I'm up for whatever at this point. I mean, Denzel could start narrating as one of these characters, and this could be a huge Fallen prequel at this point, and I wouldn't care. 
your name. You didn't ask for it. It was given when you were born. This is the fastest solve of a riddle since Bat Gilmer and Batman Forever. No, Ed, use your God-given door-breaking hands. Demon that went through all the trouble of throwing a couch in front of a window a minute ago somehow can't stop Ed from breaking through a floor. Steam burns Ed Warren, giving him conveniently blurry vision for the last several minutes of this overblown bullshit. Ed is clearly oblivious to the Red Power Ranger stalking him from behind, but I'm kind of impressed by the new Power Rangers reboot's marketing department here, so I'll let it slide. Yeah, no, I won't. And some people said it would take 600 years to cut through this door with a tiny axe. Old Andy did it in less than 20. You told me your name. Why the hell would the demon tell her its name, considering the power a name possesses in this world? And I wrote it down. Well, no, you stabbed your Bible a bunch before your daughter snapped you out of it. I need my Bible. I brought the exact one that I defaced in an earlier scene. I figured, who buys a new Bible? B A L A K. Those are the exact letters on a bookcase from earlier. You mean they just happened to decorate their bookshelves with the five letters of the demon they're chasing? Or did the demon do this? Because it really wants to tell her its name for some reason. Do they have other letters strewn about the house, or just these five? And they just happened to buy two A's in all this? Bloody hell. Valak. If the demon is this powerful, maybe we should just let it win? Well, you know what to do now. Go get that dude's weak door-chopping axe and chop this sh down. Don't leave anything to chance. Blind Ghost Hunter is every bit as distracted by a sudden hallway tent zoetrope as the little boy was earlier. And I may never have written a more ridiculous sentence. One day I'm gonna have to ask people who make horror movies why a demon would do this sh You're making more work for yourself, asshole. Let me go in! The rain! While I go in here, will you go upstairs and cut down that elder blade that formed from the lightning hitting that tree? Thanks, I owe you one. This demon don't give a f about Lorraine coming into the house. Yeah, that would have taken him down with her. Movies continue to perpetuate the lie. Well, what are you waiting for? Say its name! If the demon is this strong, why is there any tension in this f***ing movie's climax, eh? Your name gives me dominion over you, demon. And I do know your name! Thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> okay, now it's double the bull Like, three times as much double the bull Still doesn't prove to the church there's a demon here, though. Yeah, but how? They didn't never have proof. Then Lorraine sent the demon back to hell, so what else could people find after this was over? This tape, which couldn't be manipulated at all, is going to prove everything this very movie said it couldn't anyway. I got the flow, you all gotta go, so go get your bags so we can go. Ho ho! on the ceiling feminine pizza bag <laughs> and minimizing job loss you know how i feel why would you say that uh, you think that of me no i am the one who knocks it's coming from inside the wall place the call it's coming from inside the house there's got to be some part of me inside you Okay, have I done my job up to your goddamn standards? Because according to my standards, you fit the model of drug-seeking behavior. Now you may have a biscuit. Biscuit! Those are biscuits! Those are cookies! Cookies are cookies and biscuits are biscuits. If you call cookies biscuits, then what do you call biscuits? Because I'm not saying scones. You're up, Curly. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. You get inspired? I don't know if I call it that. This is Halloween, this is Halloween. A dark lord, you would have a queen! Not dark, but beautiful and terrible as the form! Janet! Janet! I've one thing to say, and that's damn it, Janet! Just reach in and pull my legs out. Now I'll pull my arms out with my face. Good. Daddy's gonna kill Ralphie. Oh, no, he's not. Yes, he is, mm. too. 